chapter for the treasure is the life of Jesus in our earthen vessels 4 colon 1 18 Paul was able to endure suffering because of the life of Jesus in him. For colon 1 therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, Paul continues to teach about his current New Testament ministry using a series of word pictures. Paul committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost at the stoning of Stephen, Acts 7. But God had mercy on Paul and saved him into this new dispensation. Paul was the first one into the body of Christ and he is our pattern, 1 Tim. 1 colon 12 16. Gentiles had no hope before the dispensation of the grace of God, f. 3 colon 2, that we are living in. In time past, Gentiles were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, f. 2 colon 11 13. So Paul said, we faint not. Faint not means not giving up. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small, PROV. 2400 hours 10, we keep giving out the word of God plainly with enthusiasm. We soldier on in the face of opposition wanting others to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, we want to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, F. 3 colon 9, God is forming the body of Christ which was chosen before the foundation of the world, F. 1 colon 4, Christ in us is also one of the mysteries given by the glorified Lord Jesus Christ to Paul, Colossians 1 verse 27. His righteous spirit in us does what the Old Testament law could not do. There is nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments, the problem is with our sinful and weak flesh. We could not keep that law, it showed us our sin. For by the law is the knowledge of sin, wrong. 320 Abraham's faith was imputed to him for righteousness while he was yet uncircumcised and he became the father of all them that believe, Rom. 4 colon 3 dash 5, 11, 12, 22 to 25. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, Gal. 314 The blessing of Abraham is Christ's imputed righteousness, his Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ's shed blood redeemed two groups of people that believe, those who will live in heaven and those who will live on earth and replace the means for keeping the law. God was merciful and gave both groups his son's spirit so they could keep his law and please him. Two but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Unlike the Hebrew legalist who had crept into the assembly, Paul said, we have no hidden dishonest agenda. We do not walk in craftiness, nor do we handle God's word deceitfully, but we make known, dispense, the truth and commend what we say to every man's conscience in the sight of God, Rom. 16 colon 25 dash 27 f. 3 colon 1 dash 9. 3 but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, for in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. But if our gospel is hid, it is hid to the people who are lost or spiritually dead, who do not have the spirit of the living God in them. Satan is called the God of this world and the prince of the power of the air who is working in the children of disobedience, those who will not obey God by believing our gospel, f. 2 colon 2, the gospel is the good news that we can be saved by grace through faith in Christ's work of salvation, f. 2 colon 8, 9. He died in our place. All we have to do to be saved is believe how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. Satan has blinded or put a veil over the minds of those who do not believe so the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the express image of God, does not shine in their minds to try to keep them lost. Christ is the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1 verse 15. The mind is the battleground. Everything begins with our thinking. The battle for our salvation and understanding the mystery is in the mind. Some are lost and without Christ, and others are saved but ignorant of what Christ is doing now. Satan doesn't want the lost to know that Jesus Christ already paid for all mankind's sins, past, 
present, and future nearly 2,000 years ago. Upon believing the gospel, we are spiritually baptized into the body of Christ, one core. 12 13. Our group will live in heaven, not on earth. Satan became the god of this world by default when Adam sinned. Satan was able to offer the kingdoms of the worlds to Christ, Matt. 4 8, Luke 4 verse 5. Satan is happy when denominational churches avoid. Paul's letters, mix law and grace, Peter and Paul, and mistakenly say the body of Christ is spiritual Israel. Satan wants to poison people's minds against Pauline doctrine. Did Peter preach the same message as Paul? No, Peter preached the same gospel of the kingdom that John the Baptist and Jesus Christ preached when he was on earth, Matt. 417, 23, 935, 1928, Mark 1 verses 14 and 15, Luke 9 verses 1 and 2, Acts 2 verse 38, Gal. 2 colon 7-9. The Prince, Jesus, arrived exactly at the time, Gal. For colon 4, prophesied by Daniel, something Antichrist will not be able to do. Christ rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on Palm Sunday exactly at the completion of the 69th week of the 70 weeks, or 490 years, determined on Israel, Dan. 9 colon 24-27. Christ was cut off and died four days later during the gap before the 70th week, the last seven years. In that gap is a bonus year of a renewed offer of the kingdom requested of the Father by the Son, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9. The mystery that we live in is also in that gap. God has interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery. Christ's ministry on earth will resume after his ambassadors have been removed at the rapture. 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. The Jews have a veil over their hearts until they trust Christ. 3.15 the same God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, Genesis 1 verse 3, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ is superior to the fading glory of the law on Moses' face, 3 colon 7, 13. We behold the face of Jesus in his word, he is the word. Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, is Jehovah God, the creator, John 1 verses 1 to 3. 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. Some Bibles have a paragraph mark here. The treasure in the earthen vessels is the life of Jesus in us. The power to understand his word is by his spirit, so that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. 1 Cor. 2 colon 14 16. 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed, on the one hand, Paul's three-year ministry in. Ephesus ended in one day with a mob revolt. On, on the other hand, he doesn't want his work in Corinth to be in jeopardy. Though Paul was troubled on every side, he knew that his truth was Christ's truth, so he was not distressed. Likewise, we are too blessed to be stressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Paul is perplexed that the gospel that Christ has done all to save us is not believed and received with open arms by all, but he trusts God and does not despair. 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken, Paul and his co-workers were persecuted by the unbelieving Jews and the idol-worshipping pagans for preaching the faith, 13 5, given to Paul by Jesus Christ, but God did not abandon them. Nothing is able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Rom. 839. Cast down, but not destroyed, Paul felt like he was thrown down as in wrestling, but he was not overthrown. The false ministers wanted to destroy Paul's ministry. He was under tremendous pressure to help Christ start the body of Christ and to give them the doctrine Christ revealed to him. Paul was not popular when he preached salvation apart from Israel and told the Jews that circumcision and water baptism were not needed by God's heavenly group, Gal. 511. 10 always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. 
11 For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Paul and his friends remind themselves daily to live the same way they were saved. Christ died for us and we died with him and were spiritually identified with his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, wrong. 3 colon 21 dash 26, 6 colon 3, 4. We can live the crucified and resurrected life by renewing our minds in God's word and obeying the doctrine, Rom. 6 18, 12 colon 2. Our old man, who we were in Adam, is dead so that the life of Jesus may be displayed in our bodies. Jesus wants to live out his life through the believer, Gal. 2 20, Colossians 1 verse 27. Since we are dead to sin, we can serve God with his spirit in us, Rom. 611, when we exchange these fragile clay pots for our glorious eternal space suits, his life will shine out of us, Phil. 320, 21. Our celestial bodies will glow with varying degrees of brightness, 1 core. 15 41 Notice that the phrase the life also of Jesus is repeated twice, but the first time Paul said in our body and the next in our mortal flesh. This is an example of the Bible's built-in dictionary. The body is equal to mortal flesh, which are the earthen vessels. His life is made known through us. Years ago, a young man stopped on the road and changed my tire for me. That was Christ in him helping me. But it was like beautiful music without the words, lyrics. Christ is revealing himself to the world through believers. We have his life in our mortal bodies right now, which is being manifested to the world until the rapture. This is the mystery of godliness, 1 Tim. 3.16. 12. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Paul said death is working in us, but his life is working in you, Corinthians. Paul and his fellow laborers were willing to die to self, 1 Cor. 15.31. And allow Christ to use their bodies so the Corinthians could live, Rom. 12. 1. 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. Paul said, We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, which is why we speak. Whenever Paul says it is written, we look to find where it is written in the Old Testament, in this case, Psalm 116 verse 10. The basis of Paul's confidence is the truth of our resurrection. We know that God who raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. After the judgment seat of Christ for service done in this body, Christ will present us to the Father, Colossians 3 verse 4. 15 For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. The all things are the afflictions Paul endured for their sakes, Colossians 1 verse 24, so that the abundant grace that God has shown us will redound, return echo with greater force, to God's glory by everyone's thanksgiving for all God has done when we are in heaven. Paul can hardly wait for the time when he and the Corinthians and the rest of the body of Christ glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and the Godhead in heaven forever. We are so grateful for God's plan to save us from our sin. 16 For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The cause is to glorify Christ together with the rest of the body of Christ in heaven. This hope encouraged, invigorated, and motivated Paul to press on, faint not, and continue the ministry. But though our outward man, temporary physical body, is wearing out and dying, still our inward man, spirit and soul, is renewed day by day by. His spirit illuminating our minds of his word, F. 118.17 For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 18 While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The light affliction is the sufferings of Christ. 1 5 For the New Testament ministry given to Paul for the body of Christ during this dispensation. In view of eternity, our present sufferings are momentary in work to produce a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our focus is to have rewards in heaven for Christ's glory by serving him as we fight for the faith, 13 5, here on earth. We present our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through which is our reasonable service, Rom. 12 colon 1, 2. 
We are empowered by His Spirit in our inner man. F. 316. The work that we have allowed Christ to do through us will bring glory to God. Since Christ does the work through us, He deserves all the glory. Our focus is not on the temporary present evil world. Gal. 1 colon 4. Destined to be burned up. 2 Peter 3 verse 10. We look forward to living happily ever after in the future new heaven and new earth. F. 110, Revelation 21 verse 1. The opportunity to be saved by just believing the gospel will end at the rapture. Then Gentiles will go back to having no hope and without God in the world. F. 211, after the mystery ends, the only hope for Gentiles in prophecy is to believe in the Lord God of Israel, 1 John 4 verse 2, and bless the believing little flock of Israel, not apostate Israel. We cannot see our places in heaven now, but we know that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, F. 2 colon 7, we can endure anything if we know we will have eternal life in heaven with Jesus. Believer troubled on every side, perplexed, persecuted, God's power, not distressed, not in despair, not forsaken, cast down, bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, delivered to death for Jesus' sake, our outward man perish, suffering light affliction for a moment look not on things seen or temporal, not destroyed, that the life also of Jesus manifest in our body, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. Our inward man is renewed day by day a far more exceeding weight of glory the things that are not seen are eternal. Faith doesn't always take you out of the problem, faith takes you through the problem. Faith doesn't always take away the pain, faith gives you the ability to handle the pain. Faith doesn't always take you out of the storm, Faith calms you in the midst. The storm. The vain religious system ignorantly preaches Peter instead of Paul, or to mix Peter and Paul, the doctrine of devils, 1 Tim, 4 colon 1 3. But, Paul's group and Peter's have an inheritance in Christ, Acts 26 verse 18, 1 Cor, 1 colon 9, F, 1 10. Two main kinds of apostles in the Bible, 12 apostles for the twelve tribes of Israel. One apostle, for the Gentiles, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Simon, Thaddeus, James, Judas, Matthias, Matthew 10, 1 6, Luke 6, 13 16, Matthew 19, 28, Luke 22, 19, 30, Acts 1, verses 15 to 26, KJB. Saul slash Paul Acts 9 verse 15, Rom 11 13, 15 colon 15 dash 16, Gal 1 colon 11 dash 16, 2 colon 7 dash 9, 1 COR 4 16, 11 colon 1, Phil 3 17, 1 Tim 2 colon 7. 2 Tim 1 11 KJB. Chapter 5 The Reconciliation of the World and the New Creature. 5 colon 1 dash 10 We have a house eternal in the heavens, so live to please Christ. 5 colon 11 dash 19 because Christ died for all, God has reconciled the world. 5 colon 20 dash 21 we received his righteousness. As ambassadors we reconcile others. 5 colon 1 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We know that we have a permanent house for our inner man, spirit and soul, after our present temporary tabernacle, tent is dissolved, die. The glorious body we will receive will be like Christ's. Phil 3 20, 21. Our housing made by God will be specialized celestial bodies that can function and live eternal in the heavens. 2 For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. 3 If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. We groan in our earthen vessels wanting to be clothed with our glorified bodies. If we are unclothed, without a body, we die, we cannot survive without this tent. We desire that our inner man not to be found naked, uncovered, but prefer to be clothed in our immortal bodies so we do not have to go through death that mortality may be swallowed up of life. 
All creation is groaning, waiting for the curse to be removed by God and for the restoration of creation to its intended eternal splendor, Rom. 8 colon 18 23. 5 Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. 6 Therefore we are always confident, knowing that, whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, now God who made us to be clothed with an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, 5 colon 1, has given us the down payment of the Spirit. Since we have His Son's Spirit in us we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in these bodies we are absent from Lord. The Son is at the right hand of the Father in heaven, Rom. 834, but His Spirit is in us. 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith in what God tells us in His Word rightly divided, not by sight for we cannot feel or see His Spirit in us nor the Lord Jesus now. We know that His Spirit is in us because Paul told us so repeatedly, 3 colon 3, 18, 4, 10, etc. Dot. 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. We are confident and willing to be absent from the body since we know that means we will be present with the Lord in the third heaven. 9. Wherefore we labor, that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For this reason, we labor so whether we are with Him or absent, our work of service may be approved by Him. As adult sons we should do right even when no one is looking for God sees everything, Colossians 3 verses 22-24. 10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. For we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive a reward for our service done in our mortal bodies while on earth. 1 Cor. 3 colon 10 15, Rom. 14 colon 7 13. We will have a reward for the good, the bad will be burned off by fire, the sound words Christ gave to Paul is the fire. Adult sons work in the family business, so we must be sure to do the will of our Father. 1 Tim 2 colon 4 Our work is evaluated based on what sort it is, quality, is it gold? We want our work to be valuable, pleasing, and acceptable. The work that we did in our flesh will be burnt off, but the work that we allowed Christ to do through us will last. 11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. The terror of the Lord is to care about what God thinks because God will judge all things at the JSOC for service and at the great white throne judgment of the lost. Job 31 verse 23 Therefore we persuade men to be saved and to follow what Christ said to Paul to the body of Christ so they may do something of eternal value for God. Paul and all believers are made manifest to God. Paul trusts that their truth is made manifest in the Corinthians conscience. God knows everyone's thoughts and hearts, 1 Sam. 16 colon 7, Heb. For 12, conscience is that part of us that knows truth from a lie, right from wrong. Truth resonates in us, 4 colon 2, 13 colon 8. In the end, we let God do the judging, 1 Cor. 4 colon 1 7. 12 For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you. Occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance, and not in heart. We are not going to defend our sincere ministry to you again. Paul wants those who follow him and understand the mystery to have ammunition to convince those who do not follow him to also follow him to follow Christ. 1 Cor. 11 colon 1, many Corinthians were glorying in surface appearances and not in the truth of the heart. They allowed false ministers into their assembly, listened to them, and criticized Paul, even his appearance. Some at Corinth were seduced by slick smooth talkers when they should glory in their sincere, genuine apostle. 13 For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Festus accused Paul of being insane. Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. Acts 26 verse 24. Some at Corinth even doubted Paul's sanity. Paul replied if we appeared mad, not in our right minds, it is for God, but if we are accounted to be in our right mind it is for your sakes.
14 For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then were all dead, 15 And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and rose again. The love of Jesus compels us to live for him and serve him, Rom. 5 8 The fact that Christ died for all mankind, even our sins and mystery, was not revealed until Paul. Because we conclude, that if one died for all, then we are all dead with him. And that Christ died for all, that they which live, our eternal life began at salvation, should no longer live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and rose again. Believers are identified spiritually with his death, burial, and resurrection. Know ye not, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Rom. 6 colon 3, 4. Our old man, who we were in Adam, was crucified, buried, and we resurrected with him. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Rom. 6 colon 6. Our sinful self is destroyed, so we no longer need to serve sin. Since we are dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Rom. 6.11 It is our reasonable service not to live for ourselves, but to live for him who loved us. Rom. 12 colon 1, 2. 16 Wherefore. Henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. From now on we do not know anyone no man after the flesh, such as Peter. Yes, though we have known Christ after his ministry when he was in the flesh, John 1 verse 14, but from now on, we know him according to his heavenly ministry through Paul. Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 16.25, we are living in a new dispensation in which God is forming the one new man, F. 2 colon 11 16, made up of those who are no longer Jews nor Gentiles, Gal. 3 27, 28. 17 Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. When a man believes the gospel of Christ, he becomes a new creature individually and is baptized, identified, with a corporate new creature, the body of Christ in a new dispensation of grace which was a mystery, 1 Cor. 1213 F. 215, 3 1-9. Our old sinful self has passed away. Christ's earthly ministry to Israel has been temporarily suspended. 18 And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, all things are of God. God made friendship between us and himself by his Son possible and has given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. 19 To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That is, it was God in Christ on the cross making friendship with all people of the world possible, not holding their sins against them because Christ paid for their sins. God is no longer mad at the world because of the sins of Adam and us. Rom. 5.12 God wants us to tell the world that they can have friendship with him by believing what his son did. 20 Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. As ambassadors, believers represent Christ who is in heaven to the people on earth as if God was begging you through us, we ask you on behalf of Christ, please decide to have friendship with God. 21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Father made his Son who had never sinned to be made sin for us, experience the death we deserved, so sinners may be made the righteousness of God in him. As 100% God and 100% man, the Son made peace possible between his Father and mankind by his blood sacrifice for our sin, Acts 20 verse 28. The Father now wants to have friendship with us. But it takes two to be friends. Do you want to be friends with God? If so, your part is to believe the gospel. 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4.
We are totally forgiven when we believe the gospel, but when we understand that his son's righteousness, his life, his spirit, was imputed to us, then we have peace. The problem is that men love darkness more than the light, John 3 verse 19. Do not be like them, but decide to trust the gospel and have eternal life, not everlasting punishment, 2 Thess. 1 9. God is holding out his hand in friendship, but we must do our part, believe the good news, and shake his hand. We must be careful to follow God's instructions to us for salvation. Cain would have been accepted if he offered a blood sacrifice, Genesis 4 verse 7, but he wanted to be accepted his way. Christ has been the blood sacrifice and God only asks for one thing and that is that we believe so we will be resurrected like Jesus Christ was. Many are not going to heaven because they received not the love of the truth, 2 Thess. 2.10, they spend every second of every day refusing to read the Bible. God made him to be sin for us. Sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. He took my sin, righteousness of God, I received his righteousness. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 20 to 21 KJV. Tips for redeeming the time. Read and study the Bible rightly divided with your morning coffee. A brief prayer and prayer throughout the day as things come up. Share the gospel to the lost and help the saved to understand the mystery. Hand out gospel tracts to the lost, timelines to the saved, and books and booklets. Keep tracts in a bag, purse, wallet, or car, ready to take on your walks or trips. Listen to Grace teachings on IPAD, the phone, or Bluetooth earbuds while walking or working at home, not on the job, that's company time. At a funeral or other public event, when you have the microphone, share the gospel. Read our commentaries before bed. Reconcilable. Potential salvation to everyone today. 2 COR 519 KJV. Reconciled, actual salvation upon belief of Paul's gospel. Row 116, 1 COR 18 colon 1 4, F 113, F 2 8-9 KJV. Why is rightly dividing the word of truth so important? 1. So we can clearly know the gospel of our salvation. 2. So we can understand the Bible, contradictions disappear. 3. So we can know who we are in the body of Christ. 4. So we can know the will of God for us. 5. So we can live a fruitful life through grace that pleases God. 6. So we can know our blessed hope is in heaven, not on earth. 7. So we can earn rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. As a member of the church, the body of Christ. At the judgment seat of Christ, Jesus will identify the spiritual maturity of your inner man, and your service in eternity will be assigned to you based on that review. Better be studying and believing Romans through Philemon KJV. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 2 COR 515 Chapter 6 Receive not the grace of God in vain. 6 1-10 Paul wants righteous ambassadors to willingly serve the Lord. 6 to 11 7 to 1 The doctrine of separation, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. 6 1 We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Our commission is to reconcile others to God. 519. Paul begs us as workers together with Christ not to have received the grace of God without being willing to share it with others. 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee, behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. Paul quotes ISA 49,8 in a parenthesis. Believers were heard and accepted by God in the day of salvation. It was by his grace that he gave us his righteousness, so now we should help others. It is a joy to serve the Lord and have a purpose in our life. God is dispensing grace to all people today, so today is the day of salvation for all people to be saved. 
God's ambassadors tell others about Christ's death for our sins and resurrection, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. The Son of God took our place on the cross and was made sin for us, 521, and we receive his righteousness. Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come, 1 Thess. 1 10, the body of Christ is not appointed to wrath, 1 Thess. 5 colon 9, Israel will be going through the wrath, Jacob's trouble, Ja. 30 colon 7, the tribulation, Leviticus. 26 colon 27 39, dot, 3 giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, give no reason for anyone to be offended so the ministry of reconciliation is not blamed, but in all things show yourselves approved as the ministers of God. We must not prevent others from hearing and making a conscious choice to believe the gospel and come to the truth, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, Paul said, sound speech, that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you, Titus 2 verse 8. We should be careful not to offend anyone either as we lovingly help others to understand the three R's, 1, the right gospel of salvation, 2, the right Bible, and 3, rightly dividing the truth, 2 Tim. 2.15, Paul said, whereunto I am appointed a preacher, and an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, 2 Tim. 2.11, but of the Gentiles is removed in the ESV, NIV, NLT, and NASB. 4, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, ministers are approved of God as we adorn the doctrine by our gentle manner of communicating the truth to others, Titus 2 verse 10, Phil. For colon 5, Paul shares how the grace of God helped them endure all things. He uses in and by eleven times and as seven times. As obedient ambassadors in a foreign land representing our Lord during a time of peace, we carry on in all circumstances by the power of Christ's love in us just as our pattern, 1 Tim. 1 15, 16, did. In much patience, Paul endured in afflictions, in necessities, and in distresses out of obedience, not disobedience. 5 in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, this list is physical. Tumults are riots, such as the one at Ephesus. Watchings is the care of all the churches, 1128. Paul often had to go without food. 6. By pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, the list of the power to endure. By pure motives. By knowledge of what God is doing. By suffering long. By kindness, the grace doctrine teaches us how to live, Titus 2 verses 11 to 14. By the Holy Ghost in them. By genuine love for others. God is love and He is in us. 7. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, the tools we use as ambassadors are spiritual and powerful. The pure powerful word of God works effectually in us, PROV. 3 colon 5, 1 Thess. 2.13, we have the power of God's life in us, 4.7.10. A good ambassador never lets a crisis go to waste, but we allow his word to comfort us and others through them, 2 Tim. 2.6, we are protected by the armor of Christ's righteousness on all sides, not ours. 8. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, and yet true, Paul now lists a series of contrasts that he and his friends experienced. Some honored them, while others will dishonor them. Some gave an evil report of them, others a good one. Some said they were deceivers, others that they were true. Many of us have found this to be an honest assessment of our ambassadorship if we are a King James Bible believer who rightly divides the word of God and understands and shares the mystery, f. 3 colon 1 dash 9, dot, 9 is unknown, and yet well known, as dying, and, behold, we live, as chastened, and not killed, they were unknown to many but well known to others including God and Satan, Acts 19 verses 14 and 15. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in. Our body, 410. They were punished by the unbelieving Jews and Gentiles for doing right and speaking the truth, but not killed. 10 is sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. 
They were sorrowful when people did not believe them, but they rejoiced that seeds had been planted. They were poor, but made others rich by telling them how to have eternal life and all spiritual blessings. Rom 623F 1 colon 3 Paul often had to work to support himself, yet he had the riches of Christ. F 3 colon 8 As having nothing, yet possessing all things. They had sound doctrine and were joint heirs with Christ. Rom 817 When we die, the only thing we can take with us is our inner man and the sound doctrine which is stored up in it. 11 O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. Our mouth is open unto you, we tell you all the truth that Christ has revealed to us because our hearts are full of love for you. Paul knew that if they did not listen to him they would end up in spiritual darkness and ignorance of Christ's instruction to us in mystery. 1 Cor. 1437 38. He said, Study, rightly diving the word of truth. But shun profane, worldly, and vain babblings, worthless chatter, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker. 2 Tim. 2 colon 15 17. A canker is a painful ulcer in the skin that often grows worse eating away healthy tissue. Paul gave an example of some brothers who wrongly divided by saying that the rapture had already happened who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some, 2 Tim. 2.18, the right thing at the wrong time caused great fear among the believers since that meant they were heading into the tribulation. We must avoid wrong doctrine. Paul gave sound doctrine to us who will live in heaven, Romans to Philemon. Peter and some of the eleven apostles wrote instructions to Israel to help them through the tribulation, Hebrews to Revelation. 12 ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. You are not restrained by us, but you are confined in your own hearts. 13 now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Paul says my heart is open to you, open your hearts to me in return. He speaks to them as his beloved children. Often children will love their parents when they get older and realize all that they're loving parents did for them. Paul hopes that when their faith increases that their hearts will be enlarged to him. 10.15. 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Paul lists a series of contrasts to show the difference between his followers and others. He asks questions to make them think. Paul wants Christ's heavenly group to obey the instructions the glorified Lord has given to them through him. An ox, clean animal, and an ass, unclean, should not be yoked to plow together. Deuteronomy 22.10 The righteous, oxen, have no fellowship with the unrighteous, just like true Pauline believers have no fellowship with ministers who are not Pauline. One is full of light and the other of darkness. 15. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement is there between Christ and Belial, child of the devil? Or what part does a Pauline believer have with an infidel, unbeliever? Children of Belial worship idols, Deuteronomy 13.13 13. In his earthly ministry, Jesus came to save his people Israel from their sins, not the body of Christ, Matt 121, Rom 15 colon 8, so they could be his priests and save Gentiles in prophecy. It is idolatry to follow Christ's earthly ministry to Israel today, that is to follow another Jesus, 11 colon 4. 16 and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Paul quotes, Ezek. 37 colon 26 28, Leviticus 26 verses 11 and 12. We are the temple of the living God and have no agreement with idols. God lives and walks in the Pauline believers. He is our God and we are his people. In the dispensation of grace, Gentile believers are his people, not the people of Israel. He will be our God and Pauline believers will be his people. The way to flee from idolatry is to follow Paul, 1 Cor. 10, 14, 15. 17 Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, the Holy Spirit applies ISA. 
52,11 to believers in mystery. In this context, the unclean thing is those who glory in appearance and not in heart, 512, not from sinners who need to hear the gospel. They should not associate with non-Pauline believers who listen to or idolize the false Hebrew ministers and their doctrine, 1122, 23. The false doctrine which is not of God is the unclean thing. In Paul's day, James said some little flock believers who did not recognize that Christ had begun a new ministry and dispensation through Paul, troubled you with words, subverting your souls, Acts 15 verses 1 and 24. Satan has continued that strategy ever since. We are to come out from churches that ignorantly teach that Christ's earthly ministry through Peter is for the body of Christ. We are to separate from false pastors and teachers who do not follow Paul because what they are teaching is unclean and useless to God. We are not to support them with our finances or our presence. After our rapture, Peter's little flock priests are to depart from Jerusalem where unbelieving priests sacrifice animals after the sun has already shed his blood before God destroys the city in an hour just prior to his second coming, 1 Peter 5 verse 13, Revelation 18 verses 4 and 24, dot. 18 and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. When we separate from false pastors and teachers who preach Peter or mix Peter and Paul then God receives us. Follow Christ's instructions to his heavenly people through Paul and God will be a father to us as we serve him from the heart, says the Lord Almighty. We can only be useful sons or daughters to God when we realize the distinctive ministry of the Apostle Paul. We must lovingly warn believers to separate, withdraw, and avoid those who teach wrong doctrine by refusing to follow Paul, Rom. 16, 17, 18. A Baptist or Pentecostal believer may be saved, but unless he recognizes that the body of Christ and the dispensation of grace began in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus, not in Acts 2, he will be in spiritual darkness and confusion and useless to God. We must rightly divide the instructions to the believers in mystery that will live in the heavenly places from the instructions to the believers in prophecy who will live on earth.